Hey everyone, your friendly fast talking high pitch channel strider is here with a beginner's build for the hammer in Dauntless. And yes, this one is really a beginner's build, it uses only Gnasher, Shrek, Drask and Karabakh gear, an Ember main one. Karabakh should be the highest threat level behemoth amongst the farmed ones that you need to hunt, since you can get everything else from lesser behemoths or lower ones. You can use the build in the early game and as a mid game build, but I would not recommend sticking with it after you move on to later portions of the heroic ones. I will actually make a slight correction because you do need to farm elemental patrols including shock and blaze ones, so you will need to fight Emberman, Charok, Naizaga and Stormclaw. Depending on how much you have progressed into the game you might also need to farm uh, Helion and Drask in those patrols, but that's only if you've unlocked them. This build will be useful against any Terra Behemoth, especially Skarn and Rockfall, since Hammers is by far the best weapon to use against Skarn and since you're using a shock weapon they will take the most amount of damage. Also I forgot to mention Kosh in this group. Really quickly, the shadow ads, you can now support me in both the Dauntless in-game store and Epic store by using my creator code Shadow Strider, it is written with a zero. Just input it in the support the creator field or the creator tag field whenever you make a purchase. I also stream both gaming and music composing on Twitch, so come check me out sometime, link is down below. Let me first start with the downsides of the build, before I show it to you and explain the advantages. Firstly, it uses Drass gear and will reduce your Terra elemental resistance, which means you need to pay extra attention when facing Karabax, Karn and Cole. It is not meant to be a build you will use later on in the end game, you will need to switch it. However, the gloves and leggings are extremely useful for end game builds, so you do not completely waste materials by upgrading those. The chest also finds its uses in some builds, but not as many as the other two gear pieces. The build is meant for new players and will let you use the plus one and plus two cells to achieve a good amount of damage output. The better the cells you get and the more upgraded your gear gets, the easier it will become for you to hunt. The build is meant for both team and solo fights. Also ignore the fact that the Dauntless Builder is displaying level 15 gear pieces, you cannot currently switch them below level 15. If you start playing solo, you will need to progress the game in the following way. The build uses a Drask Hammer, Drask Helmet, Drask Chest, Gnasher Gloves, Karabak Leggings and either a Shrike, Embermain or Drask Lantern. I think the Shrike Lantern is the best for new players due to it giving both movement speed and attack speed. You will unlock the Embermain and Drask one fairly soon after the Shrike one and you can switch to whichever one suits your playstyle best. Before I move on with the build, I will explain how to progress to the build and which behemoths you need to focus on farming so you can get it crafted faster. I know this is a hammer build and I want to give players who want to play solo a fast way to get to the build. When you first start off, you will go and kill Lesser Embermain after you have already killed the Lesser Gnasher. Craft the weapon from Embermain, the sword one preferably, and then move on to the Lesser Boreas. After killing him, also craft his sword. This is necessary so that you can move to the hammer build faster. After you have both swords, you will use the Embermain one to farm Lesser Drask and craft the Drask helmet and Drask chest. You will also craft the Boreas leggings and the Gnasher gloves. After you unlock your elemental patrols, you will use your Boreas sword to farm blaze patrols and upgrade your Embermain sword to plus 5. This is important since hammers cannot break horns and sever tails, which means that you will need an alternative weapon for farming some parts in the future. After you get the sword to plus 5, you will use it to farm shock patrols. First you will upgrade your Drask chest and helmet using the rewards from those shock patrols. After they are at plus 5, you will craft your Drask hammer and start upgrading it. This is in order to make the shock patrols easier and faster. You can now farm Karabakh to get the final part of your build which is his leggings. I forgot to mention, but you will do a couple of neutral patrols before you start farming the shock patrols. They will reward you with a bit of shock and neutral orbs allowing you to upgrade your gear a bit for better survival odds. Now let's get on with the build. The hammer is a slow hitting weapon which means attack speed is something that benefits you more until you get the hang of it. I also did not mention any mods since this is a beginner build and you will only have one mod and special available at the beginning and later on unlock the other ones. But when you unlock more I would recommend the mighty landbreaker and the impulse crown. Extended clip is unlocked much later that is why it's not used. The build will give you 5 power cell slots to use, 1 utility and 1 defense slot. In its early stage, without any upgrades, it will give you plus 3 Aether attunement, plus 1 conditioning and plus 1 rage hunter. In the utility slot, I would advise you to put more Aether attunement until you have a plus 2 or plus 3 conduit cell. If you have one, use it instead, it will be the most beneficial one in that slot. Remember that if you upgrade your pieces and get plus 6 Aether attunement from them, then use conduit cell regardless of its level. There is no benefit in having perks above plus 6. For the power cell slots, I advise you to put overpowered rage hunter and knockout king. I would first prioritize to get overpowered as high as possible, then you will go for knockout king if you're hunting solo and rage hunter if you're hunting in a group. 
Due to the unique effect of the Drask Hammer, you'll deal extra damage to Behemoth hits, so you will most of the time focus on attacking those. This makes Knockout King more valuable in Soul Hunts, since you will be able to stagger the Behemoth a lot faster, while in Team Hunts you will gain more benefit by relying on Rage Hunter, since you're not guaranteed that you will be able to achieve as many staggers as going solo. You can use plus 1 or plus 2 cells, until you gain more cells, use whatever mix of cells you have. Just make sure you use these 3 cell types. If you get the possibility to upgrade the cells, do it immediately, especially for overpowered cells. They will be useful in the future, so it's a good idea to get them upgraded as soon as you can. If you happen to not have enough cells, you can also use Sharpened. It's not the best cell to use in a power slot, but it's gonna give you a little bit of increase in part damage and more part breaks if you're playing solo. Again, mix and match the cells you have and prioritize maxing out overpowered first, since this will be your main damage boost as a hammer user. For the defense slot in the weapon, I recommend using tough or 9 life cell. Tough is more useful in my eyes since it will give you a guaranteed healing increase and a health increase, while 9 lives is a chance based perk and it's better when you increase its level. The optimal look of the build after you enter the mid game will be like this, plus 6 Eater attunement, plus 6 knockout king, plus 6 overpowered, plus 5 rage hunter, plus 2 conditioning, plus 3 conduit and plus 3 tough. This is of course if you're able to obtain a lot of plus 3 cells, which might be hard. What you will be able to achieve more easily is the following combination. Eater attunement plus 6, overpowered plus 6, conduit plus 2, conditioning plus 2 and tough plus 2. You do not need to worry about if you do not have these cells or cannot complete the build. This is just one build you can adapt and change it to your style or to your liking, but it's gonna be a very useful build in the mid game. I'm only advising you on what can benefit you, I will try to make more early and mid game builds and for the other weapons too. You should be able to make this build without the cells in around 2 hours after you initially start playing the game. If you've already progressed a bit it's gonna be a lot easier and if you have some cells and you're lucky enough you might be able to have an almost complete version of the build before you unlock the Dire Behemoths. However, in order to upgrade it to its uh, maximum potential for the mid game, you will definitely need to fight the Dire Behemoths because you will need the arcs and you can only get it from Dire Patrols. Anyways, this is everything for this video as always, thanks for watching, be sure to give it a like or dislike as you see fit and to also drop a comment down below with feedback and what you want to see in future videos. Remember to also check the links in the description to my Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Discord and other social medias where I invite you to follow me or join me. Finally, if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon in order to get notifications. This is everything from me for this video. See you in the next one. Shadow Strider out.